So if you are using RabbitMQ in a Docker container and you want to install plugins to it, you are in the right place. Just stick with me, see how. Hello and what's up guys, Medium Guy here. Before I just jump into this video, I just wanted to ask you guys to go ahead and give a visit to my videos on my channel. I've got cool stuff with cool technologies and actually in this specific video, we're going to see how to install plugins to RabbitMQ and run it as a Docker container. So we'll be actually creating our own image from the official image as the base image and later we'll see how to run it with the docker compose file and actually check if the required plugin is installed or not so without any delay let's get down to work so as you can see over here i have a docker file if i hit ls i have a plugin file right next to the docker file so in the docker file i'll be actually doing two things I'll be using the RabbitMQ 3.11 official management image and I'll simply copy the required plugin file into the container to the slash opt slash RabbitMQ slash plugins directory and by simply hitting RabbitMQ plugins enable RabbitMQ delayed message exchange which is the name for the plugin that I want to install to RabbitMQ it'll simply go ahead and install and enable my required plugin so where do i get these plugin files actually i'll leave the link down below to the official github repository for rabbitmq and in the related plugin directory in the releases section actually i have all the versions for this plugin that are available to download and by simply downloading this file over here and placing it next to my docker file i'll be actually trying to create my own image which will include my plugin so if i go to the terminal simply by hitting docker build dash t and passing image name and its version and next and the last parameter as the context i'll pass dot which will be my currently working directory and actually if i go ahead and hit enter this will actually try to build my image copying and enabling the plugin and as a result in the output i can see that the following plugins have been configured which includes my desired plugin also and actually at this point i am set and ready to actually create my container and check if i have the plugin enabled so in order to run a container i'm going to first touch a docker compose file in the exact same directory that i am in right now i'll hit enter and i'll open it in the vs code by hitting code docker compose.yaml and in here as the first thing i'll pass version 3.3 .3 me next i'll pass services and as the first service i'll say rabbit mq and the first thing i'll just try to pass the image that this container should use so i'll pass exactly the same image name that i previously created so i'll paste it over here and next i'll try to define the ports to be mapped to the outside from the creating container so i'll say 5672 to be mapped to the 5672 inside the container and also 15672 to be mapped to the exact same port inside the container which will one be used for the core of rabbitmq and next one will be the admin panel so we'll actually be able to access it through the web browser the next i'll try to pass the volumes i'll say dot slash data to be mapped to the slash varlib wrapped mq inside the container and next and the last 
definition I'll try to pass the environment and actually in here I'll pass the environment variables that will be available in the runtime of the container so basically I'll pass rabbitmq default user and default password which will be some random username and password that I'll pass right now just make sure you change these values and actually this is the username and password that I'll use to both log into the admin panel and also connecting through my applications so I'll save the docker compose file if I hit ls over here I have my docker compose file so the only command that I need to do is say docker compose up dash d to run in daemon mode so as the result I can see the creation of the container is done if I say docker compose ps I should be able to see the containers that are being run with this very docker compose file and over here I see the status up and the ports that are mapped to inside the container so actually if I go to the browser I'll say localhost 15672 to access the admin panel for rabbitmq so pass the username and password that I just passed in the docker compose file I should be able to log into the panel and at this point I'll be sure that the rabbitmq actually is up and running and ready to accept connections so going to the official documentations over here I see with the rabbitmq plugins list I'll be actually able to list the plugins that are enabled in an instance so I'll just copy this command I'll go back to the terminal if I say docker exec dash it I'll pass the container name and bash at the end so this command will actually try to create a bash session inside the rabbitmq container that is running with this docker compose file so if I paste the command over here this should go ahead and list the plugins and show me the enabled ones so if I move up over here I see that the delayed message exchange plugin is enabled so actually E stands for explicitly enabled and star means running on this very instance so that's it for this video I hope you learned something new in this video if you have any questions if you have any recommendations of course go ahead and ask me in the comment section down below don't forget to watch my other videos on my channel I've got cool stuff about cool technologies I'll put all the files and configurations in my github repository which I'll leave the link to the repository down below so you'll be able to access them easily don't forget to like and subscribe which will help grow the channel and with that I hope to see you in the next videos